Freemasonry, an ancient fraternity shrouded in mystery. With roots stretching back to the medieval stonemasons, its age-old traditions have remained virtually unchanged for centuries. When people hear the word Freemason, they think about funny handshakes, uh, they think about rolled up trouser legs. If you do a little bit of Googling, it's a cabal of people that are taking over governments and things. Freemasonry, secrecy, secret society, 100%. Now, as the Brotherhood celebrates its 300th anniversary, the United Grand Lodge of England is allowing the cameras in for the first time to reveal what really goes on behind closed doors. Right, now, will you bugger off? <laughs> With unprecedented access, we lift the veil of secrecy to discover what it means to be a modern-day Freemason. I feel a bit inadequate. It's a lot of fancy aprons. A lot of fancy aprons. From the regalia... My mum might say I look like a complete Wally, but you can never please your mum. Forward, brethren. To the lavish ceremonies... You will seal that with your lips. ..and ancient rituals. Do you have anything to give in the name of charity? No. All of the rituals that we do, which are like little plays, I love them. <laughs> and, of course, the unbreakable bonds of brotherhood. Yeah, have some of that, brother. <laughs> Describe it, you go, why would anyone want to do that? But once you're in it, you get it. So, so what do you know about Freemasons and the French Revolution? Nothing. I have to be quite honest. I'm sure we're to blame for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> For 300 years, the United Grand Lodge of England has been Freemasonry's governing body. From their impressive headquarters at Freemasons Hall in central London, they manage the Brotherhood's 200,000 members and safeguard its traditions. But Freemasonry is on the decline. Since the war, it's lost around a third of its membership. Every year, nearly 100 Masonic lodges close. And when they do, Assistant Grand Secretary Tony Rayner is responsible for administering the coup de grace. Well, this is the least favourite part of my job. Uh, I have to cancel the warrants of lodges that have been erased by the Grand Lodge at its quarterly communication. And they sit on my desk for months, so this is a batch which I really should have done in September, but um, I've been putting it off and putting it off because I hate it. This top one was the Royal Warrant Holders Lodge, and here's the original warrant, which dates from 1899. At the time, the Grand Master was, in fact, the Prince of Wales, Albert Edward, who went on to become Edward VII. I can imagine that the Prince of Wales had his hand close to here when he put his signature there. Part of the problem for Freemasonry is its ageing membership. Just 2% of Masons are under 30. And there, the deed is done. But Freemasonry is fighting back. City Investment Fund Chairman, Brother James Long, has spent 38 years in the Brotherhood and climbed the ranks to become Grand Sword Bearer with a seat on the Board of General Purposes. The challenge for us going forward is to show that we, we, we have something of um, attraction to, to people of all ages, and, and certainly um, young people are what we need. There's tradition, there's ritual, there's structure. Um, actually, a lot of people um, are looking for that in their lives. They're looking for that element of, of, of social guidance. They're looking for the camaraderie. They're attracted by, by uh, the, the way we treat one another and, and are encouraged to treat the rest of the world. There's a big charitable aspect to it. I don't think masonry is a difficult sell, even in the age of clubbing or in the age of modern uh, virtual activities. It's not outdated, it's not uncool. In fact, I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a preconception that masonry is only for old people, um, ambitious sales managers, that kind of thing. 
Freemasons have fun, I'll tell you. Crikey, I was in my 50s when I came in. I'd have loved to have been in my 20s when I came in. Part of Freemasonry's battle plan involves targeting students via their specially created university scheme. On the front line is Dr. David Staples. Tonight, he's attending his mother lodge, the Apollo in Oxford. The Apollo University Lodge is the university lodge for Oxford University. It's the lodge that I was initiated into some 21 years ago, um, and it has members who are in some way connected with Oxford. Well, we usually have between 40 and 50 people. Um, as you can see, a various variety of uh, costumes worn by all, and as you can see, a number of people from all different ages. And there's certainly enough people I know to make it a, a fun, promising evening for me. Former brothers at the Apollo include Oscar Wilde, Cecil Rhodes and Albert Edward, Prince of Wales, who would later become Grand Master. Geoffrey, how are you? Nice oh, to see you. I was wondering where you were. Ah, oh, no, I've been uh, sort of lurking, lurking yeah, about upstairs with gin and tonic. But, uh, like this, yeah. No, quite right, quite right. It's looking good. Thank you very much. Jeffrey, uh, I still remember my interview with you 23 years ago, absolutely. Um, absolutely nothing whatsoever. You told me absolutely nothing. The Apollo has been attracting young men into masonry for nearly 200 years and has picked up some unusual traditions along the way. The dress code for um, Apollo is steeped in history. Uh, we will wear black tie um, or white tie and if you are an active officer you will be in court dress uh, which involves persuading people that it's a good idea to wear uh, stockings and build gold buckles on their shoes. Uh, well they're not really costumes, they're uniforms. Um, so the uniform comes from uh, one of the crown princes, I think he was Austrian. Um, or a, no, he could have been Frederick, I think his name was. Um, and he basically gave us the right to wear, effectively, his livery uh, court dress. So that's why we all end up in, uh, in tights and breeches and, uh, and tailcoats. So, yeah. Why don't you wear court dress? Uh, because there's a limit to how much of a numpty at 41 years old I'm willing to, uh, <laughs> willing to look. The Apollo has no problems recruiting from Oxford's bright young things. Current membership is in the region of 300, and tonight the Lodge will be conducting ceremonies for five more brothers. In each degree in Freemasonry, uh, there's a need to prepare the candidate. Uh, it seems a little bit strange, but there is a, uh, reasons for doing this. In this particular case, uh, they are asked to remove, amongst other things, item, amongst other items of clothing, they remove their shoes and they put these uh, slippers on instead. But the, uh, the nature of the preparation, unfortunately, um, you cannot witness, I'm sorry to say. You'll be unable to witness the preparation of the candidates. David Staples is vice chairman of Freemasonry's university scheme. And when it comes to attracting students into masonry, Apollo University Lodge is the prototype. Student lodges can't um, be too rigid, they can't have dinners that go on for hours because people will just get bored of them and they'll go once or twice and they think, my God, this isn't for me, and they'll leave. So you have to make them lively, vibrant, interesting and relevant and uh, as part of a university scheme committee, that's what we do. Students join Freemasonry because they're looking for something different. Perhaps unsurprisingly, persuading undergraduates at less historic universities that Freemasonry is the best use of their spare time is more of a challenge. The man who spent years meeting that challenge head-on in Leicester is worshipful brother, Professor Andy Green. The university scheme is incredibly important to, to bring new uh, life uh, and, and blood into the fraternity and we see that as a way of being able to uh, bring new enthusiasm into the craft. Andy's day job is finding a cure for cancer, but any spare time is dedicated to Freemasonry, 
and persuading students that it's the best use of their time and money. Hi, Ryan. Uh, yeah, hi, Andy. Hi, yeah, nice to hi, meet you. Come you. in. It's the first time in Freemasons Hall. It's not a really about a hard sell. It, it, it's just really raising awareness that, hey, you know, we're a Freemasons Lodge and you can come along and enjoy what we enjoy. So you're at Leicester University? Yes. Studying? Um, physics with space science technology. Wow. Any man can join the Brotherhood, as long as they believe in a supreme being and don't have a criminal record. What I get out of Freemason, what Paul gets out of Freemason, may be completely different. Um, but we're all there wanting to better ourselves, and it's, 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 a, it's a real self, self improvement program, I guess, uh, being a Mason and, and, uh, and learning to be better people in society and in life. I think they see it as, as escapism from, from that, that environment of being drunk and going out and doing pub crawls and, and such. With money often an obstacle, students are enticed in with reduced fees. So our subscription per year uh, is £215. There's also a provincial grand lodge registration fee of £25. And then there's a grand lodge fee, which will be £31. So there's a one-off fee for £111, plus then the subscription of £190. As, as a mason, we expect some monetary contribution to our charities and also then the dining costs, okay? So we have a dinner, um, we don't eat for free, unfortunately. So a dining meal is generally 24 pounds, 23, depends on the menu. If you want wine on top, uh, that's generally about five or six pounds. So I think I'm done, about done. And uh, have you got anything else to add? No, oh. you've actually covered everything. Anything else you would like to ask? While well, you have us at the moment here. Uh, I think it's just a case of reading through and thinking it over, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of my roles, I think, within Freemasonry is enthusing these young adults to, to join Masonry, and, and why wouldn't they? In 1717, four lodges met in the Goose and Gridiron pub to form the first Grand Lodge of England. Interestingly, the guillotine was named after Dr. Guillotine, who was a Freemason. At Freemasons Hall in central London, they're preparing for the biggest day of the Masonic calendar, annual investiture. The Masonic equivalent of the New Year's Honours List. This ticket-only event will see 1,800 Masons packing the Grand Temple, where the Grand Master, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, will personally invest those that have been honoured with Grand Rank. Grand Swordbearer James Long is looking over the letters that will set Masonic hearts racing. It's a great privilege uh, to have. It's a great honour. Uh, people will feel particularly... Um, pleased tomorrow um, when, when they get these. I've received them in, in the past and, you know, you're, it's something where, where you're, you're always rather knocked um, uh, backwards by it. I see somebody from um, my lodge, the Apollo University in Oxford, David Staples. He's becoming a deputy grand uh, director of ceremonies. There's only one of those a year. To go from being an assistant grand director of ceremonies, as David's going to do, to a deputy grand director of ceremonies, that is big. This is my letter, which has come from the uh, Grand Secretary, and it's uh, pointed me to this, which is an uh, active role within the Grand Lodge. So how many of those are there? Because it's only deputy, not the actual Grand Director. Isn't yeah, it? I think it's quite unlikely I shall ever be actual Grand Director, but there are three, three deputies. Well, well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, dear. Thank you very much. <laughs> so it's just, I think it is quite difficult to um, get excited when you don't really understand but I took you down to London. No, I, I, I took you and my yes, parents I down. I did see lots and, of people uh, with sticks. Do I consider myself a high achiever? I suppose I do now, but it's taken me a while to get there. I have never gone out of my way to, in any aspect of my life, to try and get something that I wasn't entitled to. I've never had a huge interest in promotion just for promotion's sake. 
Um, but I have done rather well, sonically, <laughs> against the odds. Um, and I have done rather well in my career. Brother David Staples was first given grand rank for his work attracting new members through the university scheme. In Leicester, Professor Andy Green has also had some good news. Dear Sir and Brother, I have received the commands of the most worshipful the Grand Master, His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent, to inform you that he proposes to appoint you to the rank of past assistant Grand Standard Bearer in the United Grand Lodge of England, and that's signed by the Grand Secretary. Grand rank uh, for any mason is a completely high honour, and I think receiving it at a young age, um, I'm still not quite used to, to it, and, and you know, I'm still flabbergasted. Congratulations, join the clan. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> You're now going to find out some of the expenses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well Thanks, Tony. Sorry, deserve Yeah, well you know, it's, I'm still. Still shell shocked, to be honest. I didn't expect smile on your face now. didn't expect to see that in the envelope uh, on Saturday morning at all. Lovely thing, a... isn't it? Drop it on the map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. What's this? What's, what's, what's this? Because it has a square and compass on the front. Yeah. And I was thinking, I don't usually get letters with square and compasses on. You I know, think the or, or addressed to the worshipful brother. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good stuff. Actually, we'll, all that yeah, we'll no doubt see you in April, if not April. before. Absolutely. absolutely. See you tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah see you tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. See you later. Bye, 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 bye. 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 I think it's, it's incredibly nice to be recognised for some of the work that I put in. Not that that's what I've ever done it for. How are you? How are you? Very well, thanks. Congratulations thank you. again. Have you got your new frock on tonight? No, not tonight. It's, um, week on Wednesday. I, I owe everything to masonry, I think, of who I am uh, and how I am uh, in, in life. Yeah, it'll be a fantastic evening. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah, well, there'll be lots of, uh, lots of gold to us about. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good stuff. Well, I suffer from chronic fatigue syndrome, or ME, as it's more commonly known. Um, and, and that really hit me just after I joined Masonry back in 1999. Uh, and, and they were really dark days. I was practically unable to walk. Um, I, you know, I couldn't, couldn't get out of bed. Um, obviously, um, with that fatigue, um, then set in depression, and you know you, you have suicidal thoughts, and you, you, you're in a really, really dark place. I think with masonry always being there and, and being there to support me, uh, and you know friends phoning me up, are you okay? Can we do anything? Can we help? Can we do your shopping? Can you, you know you're relying on on people. Masonry gives you that 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 comfort. Um, that you can go into a lodge, you know exactly what to expect. Um, there's no tension, there's no arguments, there's, you know, it's a complete enjoyment, um, which you don't get anywhere else, you know, in, in, either in work or, or home life. Brother Andy has been honoured with grand rank for attracting new blood into masonry through university lodges. Back at Freemasons HQ, they're looking at other options to increase membership including the creation of new special interest lodges. This is a, a warrant for a new lodge. The Football Lodge number 9921. David Richard Lalana, who will be the first master, Sean Jared Whelan, uh, Leon Michael Whitfield, these will be the first wardens and others. They've said we want to um, found a new lodge. It has been considered. Um, and this is then the warrant that we will give to that lodge. So it's very important. I mean, anybody in this country can say, I'm forming a lodge of Freemasons, and, and you can, but to us, you are irregular Freemasons. Uh, this is your uh, stamp of approval. This shows that you're one of us. You really are uh, part of the United Grand Lodge of England. It is a very special thing when a new lodge uh, is born in whatever area and of whatever topic and with whatever idea for the consecration. Specialist lodges are a way of encouraging members with a particular interest to group together. Um, so they've not only got the bond of Freemasonry, but they've got the bond of, it may be classic car ownership, it may be that they enjoy the same sport. Football lodge, all for it. Maybe we'll have a, maybe we'll have a Mason United. Freemasons United, yeah, that'd be quite good, wouldn't it, really?
Along with his friend Sean Whelan, the new Specialist Lodge is the brainchild of David Lalana, Freemason, lifelong football fan, and father of Liverpool and England star Adam Lalana. Football is an integral part of our community. What better way to attract the younger male? And what brings people together more than hobbies? With the Football Lodge's official consecration looming, David and his team are making their final preparations. As you asked, we've gone for the new square and compasses. So instead of having the, the markings on the, the square or the round bit on the top of the compass, we've gone to much more of an iconicised version. Yeah. Uh, we've got the football and we've used an actual football rather than a drawn version. I just think it gives it that little bit more, more pop. More depth. Try esto, esto. Be ready. Be ready. Are we ready? We've always We're ready. been ready. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. That's brilliant, Simon. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it's that. It's a pleasure, That's mate. Absolutely terrific. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> We've looked at how we need to drive Freemasonry into the 21st century. If you stand still, you die. End of. Virtually everything in the football lodge will be football themed. Even the gavels. Superb. <laughs> is that what you wanted? That yeah? is absolutely better than I expected, ever. That's superb. <laughs> that so is really we superb. Run like that. Yeah, is that right? <clears throat> and it's. Yes. Proper studs as well. Oh, yeah. None of the blade stuff. Mind that table. What if you do, Sean? <laughs> because otherwise I'll be looking for a new home tonight. <laughs> it's about bringing Freemasonry to the people. They can identify, not just with an ordinary gavel, a gavel that's got a, a football boot. We are a football lodge. If this doesn't fit the bill, what does? Absolutely. So this is our song. Off you go. Blue is the colour, football is the game. Masons together, supporting is our aim. So cheer us on through the sun and rain. The football lodge is our name. No, 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 right. no, no, no. Footballers, Stanley Matthews, Dixie Dean, were all football, well, all three, sorry, Stanley Matthews. Dixie Dean were all Freemasons. And Nat Lofthouse as well? And including Nat Lofthouse. I never knew that. England's World Cup winning manager, Alf Ramsey, was a Mason. So were his successors, Joe Mercer, Don Reavy, and Ron Greenwood. Worshipful brother David Lalana is preparing for the biggest day of his 24-year Masonic career. Right, we're there. Done. I'll tell you what the most important thing is, that there. You've got 250 black cases in one room. People are going to walk out with the wrong case. VIP. After 18 months of planning, his dream of bringing masonry to the common man by founding a football-themed lodge is about to become a reality. Ready. The birth of a new lodge, it doesn't happen every day. People always focus on the death of a lodge, but, but we should always focus on new life. Oh, got a lovely sound to him. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Attended by 250 Masons, the ceremony is being held in the conference room of a local hotel, transformed for the occasion. Ultimately, as the master, everything revolves around what you do, and you want the standards to be high. I felt under pressure, massive pressure, but it's pressure we bring on ourselves to do as well as we can. The consecration of a lodge is a very rare event in masonry. Few masons have seen one. But our cameras have been given permission to film this unique spectacle. I knew all the, the bricks were in place to ensure that the house was built properly, but uh, you're still 
you still get very nervous. Of course you do. I scatter corn. On this lodge. The consecration ceremony is conducted by the highest ranking mason in the province, the provincial grand master. As a symbol. In order to bring the lodge into existence, he scatters corn, wine and oil. Of plenty and abundance. These offerings bless and sanctify the new lodge. May the blessings of morality and virtue increase under its auspices, producing fruit an hundredfold. I pour wine on this lodge as a symbol of joy and cheerfulness. Very few people have the privilege of being a consecration member. I pour oil on this lodge as a symbol of peace. Even fewer people are in the privileged position of being Primus Master of a lodge that they're passionate about. Armed with the lodge's personalised football, David can officially take up his role as master of the first ever football lodge. Cheers, thanks for your support. Thank you so much for coming. Appreciate that. Congratulations. Congratulations. If a mason doesn't enjoy a consecration, there must be something wrong with him. There's no doubt about that. And now for the enjoyable part, we're going to relax, let the festive board be built, and enjoy ourselves. Let your hair down a bit. <laughs> Breathing life into the football lodge has taken the best part of two years. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. They think it's all over. It is it's all over. It's all over. And David's hard work has not gone unnoticed by the powers that be. At the upcoming annual investiture, he's to be rewarded with the grand rank of past assistant grand sword bearer. If somebody said to me in 1992 when I first became a Freemason that in 24 years I'd be a grand officer, I would have laughed at them. But it's something that just happens to you. Uh, but what I do know is if you get it, you've worked hard for it and you deserve it. Grand rank is one of the highest offices you can attain in Freemasonry. You are then a member of Grand Lodge and uh, it's a very important position indeed. Grand rank is probably something that I won't see for quite a few years. <laughs> I'd say that Grand rank isn't sought after by Masons because it is very, very elusive. It's like going swimming every Saturday in the local pool but hoping to win an Olympic medal. We uh, shouldn't be uh, but perhaps putting too much store by the grand names, um, even though, of course, we respect them very much. Is there one going there? <laughs> Whelan. W-H-E-L-A-N. Yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> Each year, only one in 500 Masons will achieve grand rank. With annual investiture fast approaching, Dr. David Staples, the soon-to-be Deputy Grand Director of Ceremonies, is attending a meeting at his London Lodge in the city. This evening I'm going to the Middlesex Lodge, which is my main London Lodge. I am the secretary of that lodge, which is effectively the administrator for it, and I joined it about 20 years ago when I came down from university, and it holds a very special place in my heart. This is Brother Staples' first visit to the Middlesex since news of his forthcoming elevation was made public. Yeah. I seem to hear of you, you seem to be 
create the um, the magical staircase. It's um, it's a cross. The it's, a, it's a cross. The, but the DC must be showing it, it is a cross, but one of us has to bear it. <laughs> The Middlesex Lodge has an illustrious history, stretching back nearly 300 years. Its discerning members are movers and shakers in the city and demand the highest standards. Chris Stewart is our, um, what we call brother wine, so he is somebody who knows a huge amount about wine and he is involved in selecting various things that we drink. Do you know what we're drinking this yeah, we're evening? Drinking, yes, uh... we're drinking a white wine to Grave from the Bordeaux area, and then red with the main course, we are finishing up the remains of our 2008 Chateau Beaumont, and then we'll be going on to the new Caron saint gem which we haven't tried yet in 2009. Thank you. Oh, it's got a lovely nose to it. Mm -hmm. It really has. While the Freemasons get down to work, hidden away from prying eyes, the lodge's Michelin-starred chef is busy preparing their ceremonial dinner. Now, for the Masonics, uh, they love their food, and they like an element of traditional food, hence that why we got coquerin and rice pudding. As lodge secretary, it's David's responsibility to make sure the evening runs smoothly. It always makes my job just a little bit more interesting when 10 minutes to go, you've got to go and tell the slightly grumpy Michelin star chef that there's another three dinners needed. But anyway, let's see how that goes. It's a responsibility that includes entertaining the assembled brethren with an after-dinner speech. Worshipful Master, Brother Warden's brethren. Speak up. <laughs> this is the part of the evening when we look back on our history. There's a lot of history around this table. <laughs> but for David, public speaking hasn't always come naturally. And I have this evening the original minute book from 1916. The Lodge met at the Prince's Hotel, German Street, on Wednesday, the 21st day of March. I have grown enormously in confidence since, uh, since I became a Freemason. I was really quite a shy young thing, I think, at the age of you know, 17, 18, as I was coming out of school. Um, I went up to Oxford, never having really expected to get into Oxford, um, as I don't think anyone really does, um, from a very ordinary background. To those original brethren who founded this Lodge, in the early days of speculative masonry. Brethren, our ancient brethren. Ancient brethren. Ancient brethren. Ancient brethren. I will now regularly stand in front of very large meetings, having not prepared a huge amount for it, and I will speak confidently and reasonably, um, and hopefully vaguely knowledgeably about what I'm talking about. Freemasonry really has given me that confidence and ability to do that. Masonry is about something that happens in you and to you. Sometimes you are successful in, in it, sometimes you are very unsuccessful at being the kind of person or mason that you want to be. It's a personal journey, so each and every brother out there has their own interpretation of what they're going through and what they're experiencing. It's a real brotherhood of people who care about each other and actually care about other people as well. For myself, I will always be a Freemason. That is the way for most of us, that once we join, that is it. We're a Freemason for life. We never stop. Stiff collars, collar studs, cufflinks. Annual investiture, the biggest event in the Masonic year, has arrived. And with grand promotion looming, David can't leave anything to chance. These are the implements of abject torture that I'm going to have to be wearing for the next two days or so. Thoroughly uncomfortable. I think of it really as his thing, and I'm not really that excited about it because I don't really understand it. Right, I'm off. Bye bye, little one. <laughs> 
see you on Friday. Uh, that big one. See you on Friday. Mm. Friday. Okay. I hope it all goes well. Fingers crossed. See you later. Specialist lodges include scouting lodges, fly fishing. <laughs> oh gosh, fly fi is there really a fly fishing lodge? Got to be out of the bubble. <laughs> you can't put that in the out. The present Grand Master is Ro The present Grand Master is His Royal Highness the Duke of Kent. The United Grand Lodge of England is making last-minute preparations for annual investiture, the biggest day in the Masonic calendar. With the Grand Master presiding, everything has to be perfect. It's very exciting to see the Grand Master here. Uh, he comes once a year, well, the Grand Lodge comes once or twice a year. It's a great honour uh, for him to place uh, the chains on people and, and collars on them. Today, 1,800 Masons from across the provinces and around the world are descending on London to attend this golden spectacle, 373 of whom will be honoured with grand rank. Representing the province of Leicestershire is Professor Andy Green, who's being rewarded for taking Freemasonry to the next generation. It's all come a bit of a reality now, I think, you know, a little bit more real, so uh, uh, I think the nerves will kick in probably inside. Will you forgive me? I'm going to do it. Hold on, oh. hold on, hold on, man. Otherwise, you're going to look bad all day. Yeah. Okay? I can do it. Yes, I'm going to spare start. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Right, now, will you bugger off? <laughs> <laughs> With a little help from his brothers, Dr. David Staples is preparing for his big moment. If you put a tie pin in that at yeah. the bottom, that, won't that will right. not ever come out again. Great. Okay. Thank you very much, Michael. Right. Okay, so. He's done that in about, I don't know, three minutes. It took me 13 minutes this morning to do it completely wrong. Right, let's go and get gowned up then. Let's find a place. Also attending is Football Lodge Supremo, David Lalana. Full of masons, that's the problem. Putting that apron on, the start of the annual investiture was a very special moment, a very proud moment for me as well. Would you mind just um, doing my uh, collar for me? It's, it's mine up. I don't know whether mine's in the right I'll, place. I'll, I'll, I'll to uh... Excuse me, young man, would you just do me, uh, do the honours? Thanks very much. Some of the 90 grand ranks in masonry are purely symbolic, and some are considerably grander than others. I am... Uh, the Grand Sword Bearer. But today I'm actually going to be invested as the Deputy President of the Board. Um, and therefore I'm actually going to come in wearing my new apron, which is as Deputy President. But because I'm going to be carrying the sword in, I'm going to wear the Sword uh, Bearer's uh, jewel and collar. Um, so I'm a bit of doing a bit of cross-dressing today, but never mind, we'll get there. While the brethren take their seats, excitement levels a building as the United Grand Lodge of England eagerly awaits the arrival of their Grand Master. As the Grand Procession forms, Dr David Staples, the new Deputy Grand Director of Ceremonies, is feeling the heat. There are people who have fainted. Um, as Deputy Grand Director of Ceremonies, and they are legendary now. Um, there are people who've done all sorts of things. It is known as doing an X. I do not want doing a Staples to be 
enter the Masonic legend of, uh, of things which go wrong. Despite our unprecedented access, out of respect for the Grand Master, this ceremony will remain behind closed doors. The Grand Master is a big deal, obviously. Um, he's somebody that, uh, especially us in the provinces, um, won't ever have seen at any kind of event. The Grand Master is a Duke of Kent, isn't it? Is that right? <laughs> Uh, I don't know him personally, I regret that. I hope to uh, run into him at some future stage. Uh, I think uh, he's uh, been doing a spiffing job. The Grand Master, well actually, I know, I know, him, quite, I know him quite well. Um, he, uh, dear old Michael, uh, I shouldn't call him Michael, oh, sorry. I very much hope that um, uh, the Grand Master will continue in this function and in fact that he has a good succession plan as well if the time ever comes. I managed to get through today without either dropping the stick, falling over, fainting, or saying the wrong words. So, yeah, that's good. Absolutely fantastic experience. Something uh, that will stay with me for the rest of my life. Um, I really take my hat off to His Royal Highness, the Duke of Kent, who stood on his feet for over two hours to actually hand deliver those collars. Fair play to him. Immense. It was. Uh... Absolutely awestruck I was up there, but it happened so quickly and such in a flash, but what a memorable day, what a memorable day, I'll never forget it. For 300 years, Freemasons have dined together as brothers, and tonight is no exception. This is the Grand Festival. No one can predict what the future holds for the world's oldest fraternity. But what is undisputed is the importance of the Brotherhood to its members. Yeah, Masonry is um, incredibly special for me. And I'm very heartened with the way that we are being really understood by people who aren't Masons of, of what, what we're about, what we do and why we enjoy it. 300 years, five, six generations, incredible. We stood the test of time. I think the future's bright, I really do. If Freemasonry didn't exist in the world, would the world notice? You know, I'm not convinced that it would, but it would certainly have lost something. So mold it be. 27 years ago, a murder took place in a small logging town with some very strange characters. Well, it's happening all over again. The return of Twin Peaks, next Monday, from Sky Atlantic. So mold it be, shout out to all my brothers through Freemasonry. Let's meet on the level, I earned three degrees, had to kill me because they couldn't get my secrets from me.